Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about the different maneuvers which we can use in a vaginal delivery of a baby in breech presentation. Breech presentation means that the baby's feet are entering the birth canal first. The normal way to deliver a baby is in the cephalic presentation, so that the baby comes head first. There are different variations to the breech presentation. There is the complete breech, where the fetal arms are crossed in front of the chest and the legs are flexed at the hips and knees, with the legs being in front of the abdomen. The frank breech is when the arms are crossed in front of the abdomen, the hips are flexed but the knees are extended so the feet are in front of the baby's face. Footling breech presentation means that either one or both of the legs are extended at the hips and knees so that it looks like the baby is standing inside the uterus. This presentation is the most unfavorable for vaginal delivery. I know this topic can be quite difficult to understand, but we will go through some general rules of assistance first, then through the steps of how an assisted breech delivery takes place, and then we will go through the different maneuvers one by one and really break them down as easy as possible. So first some general rules. Never rush and never pull from below or push from above. This is really important as the baby will turn and twist and move and any interference with that before a certain safe point can lead to injury of the baby. Also in a breech delivery, the largest part of the baby, its head, is born last. So this can take a while. Usually when the baby is born head first, the head is already engaged for quite a while and has time for molding of the head to occur. This is when the cranial bones are compressed and pushed towards each other to decrease the diameter of the head. When the head is born first, the birth canal is stretched by the baby's head and every other part of the fetus coming after is smaller. And so from the head on, labor goes quite quickly. But this is not the case for a breech delivery. Here the biggest part of the baby comes last and molding of the head doesn't occur or at least not in the same degree as with a cephalically born baby. Another important general rule. Always keep the fetus with the back anteriorly, so the back of the baby facing up towards the ceiling of the delivery room. This is important as in this position the fetal head can flex and does not get trapped under the pubic symphysis. Also really important is to avoid the nuchal displacement of the arms. Nuchal displacement means that the arms are elevated and flexed behind the neck of the baby. This should be avoided as it restricts movement and makes the diameter of the fetus larger. In this position it is more difficult for the baby to pass through the birth canal. A brachial trunk injury is much more likely in this displacement of the arms. The last general rule is that a mediolateral episiotomy is done in every prima gravida, so in every woman that gives birth for the first time, and in selected multipare, so women that have given birth before. An episiotomy is an incision in the perineum. It can be done in different positions, but for a breech delivery, we usually choose the mediolateral episiotomy. This is done to avoid a spontaneous rupture of the perineum, which can lead to severe injury of the maternal organs and result in great blood loss. An episiotomy is done when the skin of the perineum is tense and becomes transparent. Now we will go through the steps of a breech delivery. This is important to know as we can't just interfere with the labor as soon as we see the baby's feet. This would cause more harm than good and we want to make sure that we know exactly when we should do something and what we should do. The patient is brought to the delivery room when the anterior buttocks and fetal anus are visible. Then we wait until the posterior buttocks distend the perineum. At this point of labor, the patient will be put in a lithotomy position. 
This is the position that is also taken in the gynecological chair. To avoid an aortocaval compression, the patient is tilted 15 degrees to the left side by the help of a wedge under her back. The patient usually receives an epidural anesthesia. Then the whole area is sanitized and the bladder is emptied with an in and out catheter. An episiotomy is usually done at this point. The patient should now be told to bear down as the pushing of the mother ensures flexion of the fetal head and so an easier passage through the birth canal. Until the fetal buttocks are delivered, we do not touch the fetus. In a flexed breech position or complete breech position, at this point the legs will come out as well, as with the buttocks being delivered, the flexion of the legs is no longer maintained. If the baby is found in a frank breech position, so that the hips are flexed and the knees are extended, and the feet are in front of the baby's face, we apply pressure to the popliteal fossa, so behind the knees of the baby, to maintain the frank breech position. This is called a Tsovianov's maneuver, and its purpose is to maintain the normal attitude of the fetus in a frank breech. So basically, the Tsovianov's maneuver prevents that the baby starts to move its legs and extends its arms above its head when the buttocks are already born. To do the Tsovianov's maneuver, the doctor's thumbs are placed on the thighs of the fetus, while the remaining four fingers of the doctor are placed on the lower back and sacrum of the fetus. You can see a visualization of this and also the following maneuvers on the poster. As the baby is slowly coming out more, the hands of the doctor move along the part that is delivered, so further up the trunk. Keep in mind that we don't pull on the baby, we just want to make sure that the arms and legs stay as they are and don't extend and move around. When the baby's legs are delivered, we want to pull down the umbilical cord and move it laterally to minimize its compression and for blood flow to continue through the umbilical cord. In the next step, we will talk about the position of the baby's back again. Remember, we always want the baby's back to face the ceiling of the delivery room. So if the baby decides to face the other direction, we will rotate it at this point and bring the back anteriorly. This position of the back is called sacro anterior as the sacrum of the baby is pointing anteriorly. When the baby's legs and buttocks are delivered, we wrap the delivered parts in a sterile towel. This will keep the baby a little bit warmer and will help us to have a safe grip and prevent slipping. Now is the time we will talk about the maneuvers. The maneuvers in breech delivery are divided in which part of the baby we will help to be delivered. We can help to deliver the arms or we can help to deliver the head. We will first talk about the maneuvers of the delivery of the arms as they are the part that is born before the head in a breech delivery. The doctor starts the assistance of the delivery of the arms when the scapula is visible. The three maneuvers for the delivery of the arms that we will talk about are the Müller maneuver, the Löwset maneuver and the classic maneuver. Let's talk about the Müller maneuver first. In this maneuver, the anterior arm is delivered first. Anterior arm means here the one that is facing upwards when the baby is in a slight sideways rotation. When we say that the fetal back should be facing upwards, it doesn't mean that it will always be in a 180 degree plane to the floor. It can be tilted to the left or the right. The baby has to be delivered up to the scapula for the Müller maneuver to be performed. The baby is then grasped with both hands so their thumbs are next to each other and the index fingers reach over the iliac crest. So in easier words, the doctor basically holds the baby by the hips with both hands. Then the doctor pulls straight down, so towards his feet, until the anterior shoulder appears under the pubic symphysis. Then the doctor inserts the index and middle finger of the left hand in the birth canal along the upper arm of the fetus 
and takes out the arm. Now the first arm is born. After that, the doctor pulls the baby ventrally, so towards the ceiling, until the other shoulder, the posterior one, appears under the pubic symphysis. Then the second arm can be delivered as the first arm, so by insertion of two fingers in the birth canal. In some cases, also the arm appears without the insertion of the fingers and just comes out as the shoulder appears under the symphysis. I hope you could follow the maneuver on the poster. I will try to recap it. So basically, when the baby is out up to the scapula, we first pull the baby down so that the upper shoulder comes out and then we pull the baby up so that the lower shoulder comes out. Now we will talk about the Löwset maneuver. This is done if the Müller maneuver fails or if the arms are stretched above the head or folded around the neck, as in a Nuchel presentation, where the arm is flexed behind the baby's head. I remember this maneuver as the twisty one. We basically make two 180 degree turns of the baby to deliver the arms. In this maneuver, we hold the baby by the hip with both hands. Then the fetus is turned 180 degrees sideways with the back facing upwards. So the side in which we turn the baby is determined by the position in which the baby is before we turn it. While we turn the baby 180 degree, we also apply a gentle downward pressure which will create some more space for the arm to be delivered. The posterior arm is the one that will be delivered first in this maneuver. So remember, in the Müller maneuver, the anterior arm is born first. In the Löwset maneuver, the posterior arm is born first. To furthermore help the arm to be delivered, we can place one or two fingers on the upper part of the arm. When the arm is flexed or extended over the head, draw the arm down over the chest as the elbow is flexed, with the hand sweeping over the face. So basically we want to apply some pressure to the upper arm and simultaneously move it downwards. After the first arm is born, we turn the baby back 180 degree, still with the back of the baby facing upwards. Also here we want to apply some downwards pressure. This should help the second arm to appear under the pubic arch. The last maneuver to deliver the arms is the classic maneuver. In this maneuver also the posterior arm is born first, so same as in the Löwset maneuver. In this maneuver we grasp the feet of the baby in a forked grip with one hand. So the thumb wraps around one of the ankles, the index finger is between the fetal feet and the other three fingers wrap around the other ankle. We use the hand that is closer to the abdominal surface of the baby. So if the baby's abdomen is facing left, we use the left hand. If it is facing right, we use the right hand to hold the baby's feet. After we grasp the feet, we bend the torso in a ventral direction. So basically, we pull the baby gently towards the mother's abdomen to the side in which the baby's abdomen faces. So again, if the baby's belly is facing left, we grasp it with our left hand and we pull the baby to the mother's abdomen slightly towards the side that the baby is facing. This will create some space under the baby and we can then insert the index and middle finger of the other hand that is not used to grasp baby's feet to help the posterior, so lower arm, to be delivered. Once the two fingers are inserted, we use them to sweep out the arm towards the fetal abdomen. After the posterior arm, we want to deliver the anterior arm. For that we switch hands. So now the other hand is grasping the feet of the baby in a forked grip with the index finger between the feet and the other fingers holding the ankles. We keep the baby bent towards the mother's abdomen, but now we will move it to the opposite side. 
So when the baby's abdomen was facing slightly left, and we had bent it towards that side, we will now move it to the right. So the baby will be moved from a left anterior to a right posterior position, or from a right anterior to a left posterior position. Now we can deliver the second arm in the same way by inserting two fingers into the birth canal and sweeping out the arm. Let's now quickly recap the maneuvers. I know it's a lot and difficult to understand. I remember how much I struggled with those maneuvers when I tried to understand them first. But hopefully this video helps. So the Müller maneuver is anterior arm first. This makes it special, as the other ones are posterior arm first. Here we grasp the baby by the hips, pull it down towards the floor and then up towards the ceiling. Either the arm pops out by itself, or we have to help with our fingers. The Löwset maneuver is the twisty one. We circle the baby left and right, each by 180 degree, but remember, back up. Also here we use the fingers to get the arm out, if it doesn't do it by itself. Also remember, that's the maneuver we want to use if the baby's arm is flexed above its head or around its neck. A classic maneuver is also posterior arm first, as the Löw said. Here we grasp the baby by the feet and pull it towards the mother's abdomen. The baby tells us which hand to use and which side of the mom's hip we pull to. After that, switch hands, move the baby to the other side of the mom's hip and the second arm should come out. If it doesn't, use the fingers. That was a lot, but we have come quite far already. Let's take a breath or two and then continue with the maneuvers to deliver the head. Remember, the head is the biggest part of the baby, and so the most difficult to pass through the birth canal. It can also get trapped in the mother's pelvis or soft tissue. The maneuvers we will talk about all have one thing in common. We want to flex the baby's head so that it descends properly, and then we want to pivot it up and around the mother's symphysis. The delivery of the head should be done without delay since we want the baby to breathe as soon as possible, and since it is the largest part of the baby, there is the least space for the umbilical cord to transport blood. However, we also want to perform these maneuvers smoothly, without traction, and as gentle as possible. The three maneuvers for the delivery of the fetal head are called Morisot's Mellie White maneuver, Burns Marshall maneuver, and Prague maneuver. We will talk about the Morisot's Malefide maneuver first. To do this maneuver, we need two people. The doctor that delivers the head grasps the baby with both hands. One hand is on the fetal abdomen and one is on the back. The hand that is on the fetal back, typically the right hand, is placed with a thanar eminence at the area of the scapula with the index finger and thumb wrapping around one shoulder and the ring finger and small finger wrapping around the other shoulder. The middle finger is placed on the occiput of the baby, which is still inside the birth canal. The middle finger will help to flex the fetal head, which makes it easier to pass under the pubic symphysis. The left hand is placed on the fetal abdomen. The main fingers in this part of the maneuver are the middle finger and index finger. They shape kind of a P sign next to the fetal nose. So each of the fingers is put on one side of the nose of the baby to be exact on the malar bones. The malar bone is also called zygomatic bone. These two fingers also help to flex the fetal head and guide the direction of the head. The baby rests on the left arm of the doctor and the extremities are usually hanging off on the sides. As the baby is moving further out, the doctor flexes the fetal head and moves the baby in an upward direction and pivots it around the pubic symphysis. The second doctor applies suprapubic pressure, so at the fundal or most upper part of the uterus. 
The second maneuver we can do is the Burns Marshall maneuver. It is also done when the baby's back is facing upwards. Here it is important that the patient has to be lying on the edge of the table. With one hand the doctor applies suprapubic pressure, so to the most upper part of the uterus. The baby is hanging by its weight, which will maintain the flexion of the head. The baby will continue to be delivered without assistance until the hairline in the back of the neck becomes visible. Then the doctor grasps the fetal feet in a forked grip, like in the classic maneuver of the delivery of the arms, so with the index finger between the fetal ankles and the other four fingers around the ankles. Then the doctor lifts the feet upwards towards the maternal abdomen, but in a wider arch. The head is then pivoted around the pubic symphysis and is delivered. The last maneuver, the Prague maneuver, is used more rarely. It is done when the back of the baby fails to rotate into an anterior position, so basically when the baby's abdomen is facing the ceiling instead of the usual position where the baby's back is facing the ceiling. So in this maneuver, the baby's face will have to go under the pubic symphysis. In this maneuver, the right hand of the doctor grasps the feet of the baby in a forked grip with the index finger between the ankles and the other four fingers wrapping around the ankles. Remember in the classic maneuver of the delivery of the arms and the burns Marshall maneuver we also grasp the fetal feet like that. The left hand of the doctor grabs the left fetal shoulder. Then the doctor makes an upward traction of the baby and guides the face under the pubic symphysis towards the mother's abdomen. Here we have to pay special attention to the chin as it can get trapped under the bony prominence of the pubic symphysis. This maneuver should be done slowly, carefully and without excessive force. That's it for this maneuver. Now we went through all the maneuvers. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.